Disclaimer, classes in Trove are built very much the same, so if you have watched any of my other build guides, then there is quite a lot of things that will repeat itself, but you can bypass those parts by the timestamps in the description. Also, my guides are always updated, so if I was to stop doing YouTube, all my those guides would go away. No misinformation will be out there, and I will always update my videos slash guides. If something major happens to the game content, if something minor changes, it will be in the description. Hello guys! who here back on the video this time around we are doing a build guide for solarian yeah so the intro is going to be very much the same as if you've seen it before you can skip ahead to maybe the demo or something else but yes the intro is going to be different just with the which class we are going to do basically just telling you if this is your first time watching one of these build guides what you can expect from the video so as you can see right here i did make it into chapters also indicated by uh, timestamps which is in the description or on the video and first we are going to start with a five minute demo just showcasing the class what abilities do it have kind of just showing off not going into detail what they basically do but just showing them off and maybe that will interest you at making one of these classes one of your mains after that we are going to do a quick look at overall stats for the every single class so for this class that you're watching right here we're going to do it for that one and also in general we are going to talk about stats for example like crit hit and crit damage that's going to be some generalization right there and then we are going to move into gear and everything there's on the gear page that is of course banners allies head face weapon <laughs> and also rings and food emblems flasks so on so on. everything there is in the gear uh, page we are going to go over that one as well then we are going to cover gems mostly we're going to cover the empowered gems of course we're also going to talk a little bit about the smaller ones but mostly we are going to go into the big empowered ones or the big gems that is and then for lastly of course as you can see right here on the screen we're also going to talk about the star chart or the talent tree as i basically call it so that's what the intro was all about, just letting you know what the chapters are and how it is going to work with the timestamp. So you can skip ahead if there's something you already watched, you can skip ahead to doing that, or you can basically uh, watch it all if you feel like you want to do that. But that was the intro, now we can jump into the demo.
All right, let's take a deeper dive into the Solarian class as we write here. We're gonna go over the class abilities very first. If you haven't seen the demo, it's gonna explain it right here, but I kind of try to showcase them right there, but I'll go into that theory. We're gonna talk about some stats. We are gonna talk about the gems. We're gonna talk about the gear and so forth, like we've done with all the other build guides. If you've seen any of those as well, if you haven't, you should definitely check them out. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the Solarian abilities. If we go right over here to the passive, it's gonna be a wall of text. And I'm just gonna tell you how it basically works. So when you apply damage over time with some of your abilities, you are going to get more of this one. This one down here, this is basically, if you don't have this one here, uh, it might have an add-on or something like that, that is uh, you're kind of doing something with it. So uh, you, you just keep that in mind if you don't have this one down here. It doesn't really matter too much. What it does is that when you basically, right now I have one shot, that's, that's you can't go lower than one shot. And one shot, that just means you have, when you have one projectile just going like straight one, right there uh, when you then get uh, three that's the next step you get three you get this one and this one lights up and then you get three shots and then when you do more damage over time uh, you get uh, this one of course when you do auto attack it's gonna spend those uh, shots so when you shoot uh, basically if you do some damage over time you get to stage number two you can kind of say then you uh, have three shots and then when you auto attack it's going to remove that as well and the same thing when you go to stage three and then stage four and then of course you have all seven shots so it's going to be like a like a cone that it's going to shoot when you do shoot that but uh, basically if you shoot auto attack and also apply damage over time it's going to go up and down up and down up and down that's also how you get energy is that when you apply damage over time that's how it's also going to work and then the last thing is of course your phoenix which is behind here and it has some uh, text about when it explodes it when it you know if it dies it becomes an egg and then it explodes when it then reemerged and stuff like that it summons it again and stuff like that so it's just a passive kind of thing that it can also apply damage over time uh, and so it can also stack these ones up so basically how you get uh, more of these is that if your little uh, phoenix here attacks something uh, or you apply some damage over time uh, that's basically how you are going to get more shots. This is also how you get energy and get your ultimate to work. But that's the passive. The next thing is the uh, solo flare, which is, can also apply a damage over time. But basically what it does is that it combines the gunslinger, if you know that class, you can see right here, you can hold it down and you then float in the air that you could do with the, uh, you know, with the gunslinger and then it kind of charge up like this, uh, you know, the, um, the shadow hunter right for that that ability and then you just and you then also float down and you actually don't have to you can see right here usually for the gunslinger to keep being in the air you have to uh, damage enemies but with the solarian you just have to hold it down and you float down and then also when you then release it's going to be a little while before it uh, ends and then you're going to fall the rest of the thing down so basically pretty simple pretty easy so the thing, but the thing is that the one you use the most is the number one ability, and that is the guiding light. And basically what it does is that you throw down a beam of light, uh, and then it basically expands. As you can see right here, there's a beam, and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then uh, and, and in this area, it applies damage over time to the enemies. So, uh, and you can shoot it pretty far. You can shoot it all the way over there. Uh, but if enemies run past it, which they run like right here, they didn't get hit by it. And then they do, do no damage to them. And it stacks up to three times. So you have a three stacker. So you can put it in multiple places if you want to do so. And I don't know how many you can have at a time, but I would assume it's only three because there's pretty long cooldown on it. But since you have three of them, you're not really going to run out and usually you kill things in the first being right there. So the next thing is, of course, uh, and of course, there's all sorts of uh, you, you can, you know, uh, uh, read all that yourself. But the thing is, that's just a teal they are, I guess, of what you really use it. And then, of course, you got your ultimate, uh, which is also applied. And I think in, in my uh, opinion is that it becomes uh, a must to have your class gym and I'll kind of explain that both when we talk about our gyms but also right now because they tie together and why I think it's a mandatory is that is because basically what it does is that when you then apply because right now 
yes, it did work right there. You saw me actually using it because I did, a, you know, gain a little bit. You couldn't actually see it right down here. I didn't actually know we had any, but uh, when you do uh, use your abilities or apply, sorry, and when you apply damage over time, you are going to get your energy and that basically uh, does your ultimate. So if you have no energy, uh, I can press the button right again. You can see nothing happens now. There's no cooldown or anything like that. It's just that when you have... Um, when you have energy, it's gonna use that energy, like drain it basically. So it's gonna pulse as long as you have energy, but it's gonna drain it pretty quickly. So it's not like gonna be pulsing all the time, but uh, you get of course your energy by applying damage over time, and then you just basically uh, expunge it all when you have that as well. So uh, let me see if I can't get a little bit of energy right here. Uh, so we got a little bit of energy right there, and I can just throw down some of these here. And I'll show you guys, as you saw before, uh, let me just go really quickly and unequip it real quick here. And basically when I use it now, it's only going to be, and it's a little bit easier if I just run away from my enemy there. So when you didn't use it, oh, I didn't have enough energy. Uh, maybe I can get a little bit more, So, but I should be able to run away from it. Oh, okay, I can't use it <laughs> at the moment. But the point is that uh, right now it only uh, damages me, or the damage is only around me. And when you don't have the when you didn't have the class gym, it's gonna do the same thing just around the phoenix. So basically, that's all it's gonna do is that uh, instead of just being pulsing around me, it's also gonna be pulsing around your. Uh, Phoenix and that's also going to overlay the ones that are in between so uh, if it's a little way from you then you of course you can use it like that but I couldn't really save up some <laughs> energy right there um, but yeah that's how it works uh, you know just you know pulses until that and it has a bunch of text just to explain sort of all the uh, all the, all the other things as well but yeah uh, definitely something you want to use is that one as well so while we're up here, let's talk about the subclass as well. The subclass for the Solarian is pretty nice, actually, uh, for itself. But of course, we cannot have our own subclass. I don't know where my Phoenix is going. He is just out of here. But uh, usually, I like to use the Knight. You can also use the Lunar Lancer if you want to do so, because we are a physical damage uh, character. Uh, so you actually also get a benefit from the 750 physical damage. But uh, it mostly, it's just because of the transforming into that Lunar form and just kind of doing a bunch of uh, extra attack speed and extra uh, damage reduction and such. So you can use that one as well. So, But if you do have the Knight, that's a little bit easier to get. Uh, Dune Lance is not too hard to get, but the you know Knight is a is a starting class, for example. But if these two are just kind of close to each other, just use whatever you feel like. If you want a more movement speed, go for that one. Uh, but if you want the the buff from this, you should definitely go for this one. Uh, but the flash capacity is pretty nice as well for any class. Uh, but you can use any class you really want if you if it comes down to it. If you have something, just use the one that is highest level and most power rank as well. Usually those two things go hand in hand. So just use whatever you have of the most because that is going to give you the most power rank. As you can see, I have a maxed out or maxed out, you can say it like that, knight, right? And that's only going to give me 90 uh you know uh power uh sorry power rank to the to the Solarian or any of the other classes that of course that only ties into the level so I just use the one that is leveled most leveled but then again the one that's most leveled is usually also the one that has most power rank in the most of the cases but it doesn't really matter too much uh the power rank is just kind of tied into the, the this one and then the level is just tied into the power rank you gain from equipping that one as well so use whatever you want to but i'm just you know use lunar lancer or the uh, knight those are really good options for that then we got the gear and we're going to start out with our hat and i want to use right here attack speed and i also want to get critical damage you could go with some movement speed as well usually i say movement speed is for melee classes and then attack speed is for range classes but uh movement speed uh, is not bad you just get around a little bit faster uh, if you do use the knight subclass as i do i feel like you are pretty fast on your mount running around from dungeon to dungeon so you don't really need to have that as well and usually people bomb their way through dungeons right so they get to that anyway so it doesn't really matter you basically running the dungeon you're just bombing you through through it right but attack speed is very nice because uh yes the abilities are very nice 
I'm not a big fan of the charge ability right here. Usually how I play, and you probably saw it from the demo, is that I run in, use this one, stand on top of it, so because the enemies are usually going to run to me. The ones that are ranged, I'm just going to usually just hit. And that's where attack speed comes in. You don't really need attack speed because, uh, well, you don't... Of course, you get these uh, thrown out there a little bit faster, but... Kind of the, the the thought process behind the Solarian is that you stack up, uh, you know, your damage over time first. You get a bunch of shots and then you do the AOE thing. It's kind of like apply damage over time, wait a little bit and then kind of, you know, shoot all your arrows, uh, shoot your ultimate because you also got some energy. That's sort of how the, the thing kind of works in a sense. So... Uh, attack speed is just kind of the lazy man's way, I guess, because then you basically what I do, like I said, I put down this one and then, then I just kind of shoot them. And of course, attack speed makes it a little bit more fun uh, to kind of kill them a little bit faster. Magic find, unfortunately, uh, is something we can't really get anything else. You can get some max health if you want to do, max health percentage as well if you want to, but there's really no amazing other uh, option than magic find on this one. So I would go with the uh, yeah, attack speed. If you get one with movement speed, you can definitely use that one as well. The only thing that is not debatable is, of course, the critical damage. Critical damage, no matter where it is on the gear, it always has to be there. That's one of the best stats we can get on our gear, except, of course, for the maximum health and the, you know, the physical damage and the light, which is always on every single item, so we don't really talk much about these. We can only change the last three uh, uh, stats, right? So that's what we are going to talk about, basically. But, of course, the other stats are a lot better, <laughs> but those are always on our items. So critical, critical, uh, critical damage is the... I guess third best stat you know in the game basically um, besides light and your main stat right so uh, going on to our uh, bow here again I went with magic find and critical damage and attack speed again the movement speed or critical hit we can actually also get critical hit on our bow if you want to do so but if we look at the stats you can see I'm way over the critical hit we'll talk about the stats before we go on to some of these emblems and stuff like that let's just talk about the gear first because I kind of forgot about the stats. But anyways, let's go back to the bow. And we got some attack speed. And again, you can use, uh, you can go with a critical hit here as well if you are below that 100%. And then critical damage uh, as well uh, for uh, whatever uh, slot you can get it in. Uh, is very, very important. So if yeah, just definitely get it right there. Sometimes it can also be there where the attack speed is and that's just fine. Then you can play around with the other stats. That's kind of more the ideal way is to get your uh, critical damage on where the attack speed is because then when you are not second stat reroll weak, you can still, you know, play around with it and you don't have to be, you know, but it's such a, it comes around every month, right? It's going to be four weeks, right? So it's not that much a big of a deal, but it's a little bit of a, little bit of a tip, I guess. Anyways, here we got, of course, our face and here is a two, th two stats that are actually not optional. And uh, that becomes the physical damage and also the critical damage. Like again, we talked about the critical damage. It's not debatable. That's always there. But of the physical damage here, finally, we can get something besides uh, magic damage or sorry, magic find. Uh, of course, there's already physical damage on this one, but I really wish, and I've said this a bunch of times, I was going to say it again, hopefully somebody sees it that has influence on it. Magic find, I would really love to have uh, get physical damage or magic damage on that uh, third stat or fourth stat as, as it actually is, right? I really would really love to get that instead of having magic find or some just more health, which we really don't really want because we are running, of course, death defying, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But you can go with, again, movement speed or attack speed on this one if you want to. But the physical damage and critical damage is something you absolutely need on this one as well. Let's talk about the ring. So we want a ring and we want physical damage on our ring. You can go with something. You definitely don't want to go with a critical hit if you are way capped, as I also am. Uh, but it is a place where you can get some, or you can play around with some critical hit uh, to gain it. It's the same thing again with the bow, or else it all comes from gems, and or for some of the, some of the classes to do gain a little bit of critical hit uh, per level. But uh, you can actually play around here with this one uh, as well. All you really want is a crystal ring. You of course want to get a four uh, crystal four ring. If you have a crystal four ring. Uh, with critical hit on it, but you have way more critical hit than you need Definitely go with the four instead of going with the three that actually had the best stat for the, the best uh, the, like for example jumps or uh, Magic find or something like that. There's not a lot of great options for rings um, so 
if you do get something that's cool, you can't really get something amazing. But the physical damage uh, difference between a three ring and a four ring is so big that you should definitely just pick the uh, four ring and just play around min maxing some other stuff on your gear to get that uh, close to 100%, of course. Then for banners, uh, you want to go with, of course, your 10 banner and you want to get a one with physical damage and then you get also light on it. Then the third and the fourth stat doesn't really matter too much. You can go whatever you want as long as you just get a, a U10 uh, uh, torch or banner, as it's also called. You always get one of those uh, from there as well. So really not much more to say. Just make sure you get the one with the physical damage and then you can look through them all. I think there's like 10 of them or something like that with different, like some have, uh, you know, more movement speed, but it's like 10 movement speed, which is not bad, but it's not a lot. For example, also a couple of flash charges, which is nice as well. So it's really, really open what you want to get for your banner. It's not really set in stone too much around that. And then for our ally, we go with the Ernie, uh, because of uh, the uh, you know physical damage that we do gain. I have gained actually a few of these. You could also go with the Scorpion. Uh, also gives you movement speed for nearby as well. This gives you a projective shield. So it doesn't really matter which one you really want to use. Um, you can use whatever you want. Uh, maybe the Scorpius is a little bit better, but it's also a lot harder to get uh, compared to the Ernie. Ernie is super easy to get and that protective shield is amazing as well for any class uh, so but the scorpius is probably a little bit better because of the you know the healing you get a little bit back but also the movement speed is a little bit uh, better but uh, if you have the ernie like i said way easier uh, to get so definitely go with that one uh, you can play around they're like i said mostly very uh, you know equal in there so it's really up to you what you want to do but the ernie is just better in a sense that um, that's such easier to get, but it's really up to you what you want to want to get. Um, yeah, maybe the Scorpius is a little bit better, but it's not really a big uh, thing as well. But we actually also have to talk about our stats. We are a physical damage character, so we of course want to get as much physical damage as we can get at, at any point. Uh, we don't really want to go into energy regen, as you can see here. Uh, energy regen do not work. Uh, on the Solarian, it's only when you apply that damage over time, you do get that energy regen from that. So uh, definitely no energy regen on your gear. Uh, that could also be applied to a ring, for example. We can't use it there either, unfortunately. And uh, max energy is actually a thing. Uh, you cannot get max energy on anything except from dragons. There's a few dragons. That's why I have uh, 127. It's because it's from dragons you get that maximum. And that's actually pretty good from the Solarian. So the Solarian is also way, way, like, probably like the uh, hardest or the second hardest class to get. And when you are at that point, you're probably also going to have pretty much every dragon. Uh, and then, of course, you want as much energy, uh, max energy as you can get, because the more energy you have, the longer you are going to have your pulsing ultimate going. So, of course, you want to get that and to the max, of course, with that. Then, of course, we got some attack speed. You can go with attack speed, but you can also go with the movement speed. You can see I have pretty low movement speed uh, right now, so you could also go with that. You do get attack speed. That's also why movement speed is sort of sometimes better than attack speed on mo most classes, actually, because movement speed, you don't get movement speed from dragons. You do get attack speed from dragons. Some of the bonuses do give you from that. So uh, keep that in mind that, yes, attack speed is amazing, but movement speed sometimes are just better uh, also for classes that need it because the movement speed, uh, you know, you can't get in movement speed from anywhere. Of course, you have your mount you can jump on and be a little bit faster. Even using a knight a subclass, you're moving a little bit faster on your mount. But in the end, uh, you do get attack speed from some dragons. It's not a crazy lot, but it's kind of a, a big deal, uh, you know, compared to that. So no dragons give you movement speed, but they some of them get yourself some attack speed. But now we can go down to the critical hit. And the critical hit, uh, you want to, of course, get as close as you can to 100%. You can see I'm 33% over, which is way too much. And uh, you just want to hit that 100% because anything above that is not going to benefit you in any way. Of course, I haven't min-maxed this one because it's not my main. 
but my main do have a 100%. I'm actually 0.2% over uh, attack speed percentage of the 100% on my main at the moment. So there's a lot of things to play around now with now that we also have, uh, you know, uh, crystal gems. I only have stellar ones on these ones. Uh, again, not my main, so it doesn't really matter. But on my main, I do have, uh, you know, the crystal ones. But yeah, just want to hit to that 100%. That's just the most important thing. Then uh, second last, of course, we want to get our critical damage. You want to get as much as you can of this one, because when you are hitting 100% right here, every hit is going to be crit. And that means that this has full effect. If you're only on 50%, for example, critical hit, then your critical damage is only, like let's say you had 4,000 critical, 4, critical damage, uh, and uh, that's amazing. That It's not obtainable at the moment, but the point is it would only be half uh, of that. You know, It will still be 2,000 as I have right here, but you wouldn't get that 4,000 because you're only critting half of the time, right? So uh, if you want to be have the full potential, uh, of course, you get that 100% on the critical hit. And then like I said, critical damage, get as much as you can of that. And then lastly, we want to talk about light. And light is one of the most important uh, stats in the end game. So you want to get as much as you can of this one. Right now, the, uh, the max is 11,000. Uh, of course, it's going to go up over time, but you don't need that much at the moment. Um, 11K is way over what you need. Uh, I would say around uh, 6,000, a good start, as I have right here. You can definitely clear U10 with that. And then it, I would say about 9, 8, 9, more 9,000 is basically a good uh, starting point for uh, U11. And then when you get into 10K, uh, which was kind of what we had uh, when they released U U11, and that's where um, you know we hit that um, that that 10k. That's something where you can start doing some uh, some damage to it. And now that it's 11k, it's actually going to be pretty uh, easy to go through U11. And maybe in the future we will have U12 or whatever we will have, and 11k will just be something we had something else. So there'll be like 15,000 or something like that in the future or whatever. But just get as much light as you can with this one as well but we talked about our stats let's go into our flask and of course we are rocking the death defying just because it's so easy to get the other ones are not too hard to get either uh they do have some fun effects you can play around with it for example this one recover a charge every time your magic find triggers uh usually uh that's really great but i've heard i haven't played around with it myself but i've heard it like eight thousand. Uh, magic find then you are consistently procking this one but yeah it, it basically it's uh it, it's a chance on a chance basically in a sense the same thing goes with this one uh, if you do have a hundred percent critical hit every hit you do have a chance of doing that so if you only have 50 percent critical hit only half of the time you will have a chance to recover one so it's not like hey do you have a 100% critical hit? You are going to recover a charge every single time. That's not how it works. And the the recovery ch chance is not very, very high on this one, even having a 100% critical hit. But those are the kind of the ones you want to look out for. But death defying is just so good that, yeah, we should we can't really do anything about it other than because it's just automatically uses. It gives you a nice amount of flash charges. It gets, comes from the shop. And it is in-game currency. You just get it from doing your star bar, right? So it's just so easy to get compared to the other ones. So when you get Death Defying, you got basically set for Flask for the rest of the time. I always use Death Defying just because also a little bit of laziness, but it just gives you a nice amount of flash charges. You, of course, you get more with the, this one, but then you have to use it yourself. You also recover less health, but yeah. 30% is more than enough for recovering all of that. So let's talk about emblems. And the god of all uh, <laughs> emblems is, of course, our arcane one and our martial emblem as well. These are, of course, mandatory for uh, if you're playing a magic damage build or a physical damage one. We are, of course, uh, doing a physical damage. And this is also from the store and also in-game currency. So the, first of all, they're super easy to get. And then second of all, second of all uh it, it's just so much damage you get out of using these so it's just like so crazy uh i can show you here with the stats if you look at my physical damage of right up here and i go ahead and use a flask you can see it goes almost up to a million almost a million uh, physical damage uh 900 000 for for using one of these flasks 
And so, so that's just so much damage you get for those. It's only three seconds, but in those three seconds, you're really pumping. You're really pumping. And then for, so, so basically always either martial or arcane for either what classes you are using. Then for the second emblem, we do have a little bit more options. Uh, we do have the trail basing if you want to go a little bit faster. Uh, of course, the ones that, uh, for example, this one that... Uh, temporarily boost your energy regen is not going to work for it and also this one with that basic restores all your energy is not going to work either because that's not how the class works um i might actually not know uh okay it has to i'm pretty sure i'm not filling you guys with lies oh i actually am filling you guys with lies it does actually work okay so that's actually pretty interesting for the solarian uh you can actually use this one and then you actually have full energy so I'm actually going to change my mind on this one. So I am actually going to change this around, even though I do like the Bountiful one. I'm just going to talk about this real quick. Also, another one actually I'm going to talk about, but uh, this has a chance of not consuming a charge when you use a flask or when you are like when it triggers. So basically, there's a chance of you having infinite, uh, infinite uh, flask charges if you're lucky enough to have a chance. The chance are very, very, uh, not very, very low, but it's kind of low. So you're I'm pretty sure that you're not going to get into a loop of endless flask. I would be, that would be super, 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 super lucky. But I do like this one. It's kind of underrated. I don't see a lot of people talking about it, but I feel like it's kind of cool in some cases as well. But uh, also the sure strike, if you're not a 100% critical hit, you can actually use the sure strike one to get to that 100% as well if you want to do so. Uh, but when it comes over 80%, of course, it just becomes worse and worse and worse. But yeah, this it uh, it's kind of a nice way to get to 100% if you want to do so. Then you've got all the allies. Those I, I like the allies, they're fine, but I kind of don't like the... Um, I kind of don't like the AI of it. They're not super amazing, but I'm actually going to change my emblem knowing this one. I am pretty sure. Uh, let me actually do a little bit of testing. As you can see here, this is what happens when you have full uh, energy. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and try something right here. And then we're going to use a flask. We have to wait for it to go around here. Uh, so yeah, this boosted and it's still going to be a hundred percent not gonna be working So but that's actually pretty cool I just had to test that now that that actually also worked, but this actually do work. So that's actually pretty cool So I'm actually going to change uh, My build right on the fly. Uh, I'm actually going to use the sell uh, The sell is actually pretty awesome uh, right now You can get it from Luxion as it says right here But I did not get it from Luxion because I had it before Luxion uh, we have to introduce to the game, but you do have to keep an eye out for this one as well. You want to get all the emblems anyways, but yeah, this one uh, is now basically something I definitely want to get and then use it because uh, yes, the damage over time is not that hard to apply, but if you can run in, use your flask and then just start using this one to start out with, you're going to do actually quite nice damage. Uh, the unwielding, I just want to talk about this one. Uh, it's pretty cool as well. It gives you a brief shield and it just kind of sometimes because this one can proc pretty quickly You know, it doesn't have any like every time you should have been dead It's gonna proc so if the boss hits you really hard You can basically just like your flask can run out pretty quickly with this one here It does uh, you know give you that invulnerability shield. It's only for like two seconds or one second two uh, one two seconds But in that time it is gonna block one of the hits from an, uh, a boss that hits pretty fast Maybe even two hits which then means you're basically saving two charges of your flask But yeah, I definitely want to go with this one here. That is actually pretty uh, nice uh, but yeah that's cool. And also it does spend you all of it. So it's not like you are going to get it. But of course it does require you to go into there. But yeah, you can definitely use this one. I am pretty uh, pretty stoked that this actually uh, do uh, work. This one of course only restores to nearby allies. So I don't think this one uh, should be should be working because it's going to be around. And it's still also a vision over time. Okay, so it actually did give me a little bit. <laughs> so it actually did give me a, it actually do give me, a, you can actually do also use this one, which is actually pretty cool as well. That actually very nice. You do have to use a lot of it to get to, to max, but um, this one is also from Luxion. So definitely get these as well, depending on which ones you want to use. 
I definitely want to use this one instead of the other one, but uh, this actually also do work. It does restore, so it's not like a it's not like a like this one where it's like it just boosts the energy regen because that's definitely not going to work. So that's pretty cool. So anything that kind of gives you just restores that is pretty cool. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna keep this for for now. But we're not done completely yet. We do need the gems, and those are coming up right here. So let's jump into the uh, gems. We talked about the class gem was mandatory. Uh, you know, I do have the max health on this one. Actually, I see <laughs> you should definitely not have max health on this one You should have a physical damage on this one here So I'm gonna change that as uh, soon as I'm done with this one uh, We're gonna have some physical damage on this one instead, but yeah physical damage You want to have critical damage and critical hit on all your gems except for the cosmic which we're gonna go into a little bit But you just want to have physical damage critical damage and then critical hit if you do have maxed out uh, over, as you saw, how much critical hit I have, then you can change some other critical hit into max health percentage to do that instead. But you definitely want physical damage on all your, uh, you know, you don't want to have max health. You can see there you got a, a little bit better one there. I think we got a better one there. I think pretty sure that other ones are as they should be. Yeah, they are what they should be. And then. Uh, for the other ones, you can go with uh, either the pyro disc or you want to go with explosive. I'm just uh, kind of memed on the class a little bit by going with the stinging curse and also the uh, spirit search. And the spirit search basically, when you take damage, it spawns you like sort of these projectiles that goes from you, sort of in a ring, as it says, and then applies damage over time. The damage over time do not work with all of this. Doesn't, of course, it does apply a damage over time, but you don't get energy from it. You don't get more arrows. And the same thing with the Stinging Curse. You do not get more arrows. You do not get more energy regen. It, it, it doesn't work for it, but we don't really use these two ones very much. So I just thought that it would be cool if they would actually work. I think it's kind of a missed opportunity for the class that these two do not work with that. I think it's amazing. I love the damage over time. I it's a class that is just built on damage over time. And I just kind of wish that it would kind of work for the class. And of course it works, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it works, but it doesn't work. But the thing is, it doesn't give you the energy. It would love if it gave you the energy. I would love if it, uh, you know, gave you more projectiles if it scaled, you know, uh, with the class when you, you know, it does uh, scale with your power rank, right? But it, I wish it would scale with like the damage over time. I just kind of wish that it all would scale. And yes, of course, they do scale with power rank. It do scale with your physical damage, but it, it, it's not like this one would also scale on other classes. I just wish that these, uh, you know, damage over time uh, gems would just be even more amazing on uh you know a class like this and so sure they are more amazing in that sense in, in another class but just by a little teeny tiny bit because you when you see when you think solarian you think think damage over time and this one would just be super awesome if they kind of worked even better with the class right like giving us the arrows and giving us the energy which of course it do not. Oh, I almost forgot to talk about our cosmic gems as well, of course. So, but of course we got our cosmic gems. Here we want critical damage again. We want physical damage. Light is always gonna be there. Physical damage is always going to be there, but we do want the critical damage right here. And for our, of course, the big one, we do want the light, which is always uh, there, but the physical damage and the critical damage is something you can change on the big one. And of course you want physical damage and then critical damage. And then you want to use or move all those small boosts to get a level 5, 10 and 15. You want to move that into light because light is the most important stat in the game. So we want to move it all in there. So move your boost into that one. Usually you want uh, your boost to be on the critical damage or a physical damage on your other gems. You don't want to put, of course, it on critical hit. But for this one, we want to put it all into light, nothing into the physical damage or the critical damage as it is right now. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future if we get a lot more uh, light but definitely put as much you can into that one as well. So almost forgot to talk about our uh, cosmic gems here. Just kind of remember it right after. So yeah, just 
um, make sure you remember to uh, put it all into light for your ones. And of course, you want also use the Berserker Battler. You can use the Vampiric if you want to, but the Battler is just so amazing for the extra attack speed. And but mostly for the extra light, you do also get with this one because you want to have as much as you can light and again. So Battler is just a god in this one, but Vampiric is not too bad if you have that one. Uh, so if you're working that one, it's just more for a farming here. And this is basically a little bit, little bit better for a bosses. So out that out of the way, let's uh, continue. And uh, yeah, that was the uh, Salarian. That's basically everything there is uh, with all the gear. But we're not completely done yet. We do need, of course, to talk about the star chart, which is coming up right here. All right, so now we got the physical damage part. I don't know if you saw the magic damage one, but the physical damage one looks very much like the magic damage part because this over here, you got, of course, still the critical damage, which there's a lot of great notes over here. You do have to spend one point right here, which gives some magic damage to get into here, which I think is a little silly, but that's just basically how it is. But it's a great, a lot of great physical damage notes going through up here. There is a little bit of a note out here. I was kind of debating with myself if you should get out here because it is a lot of points again going out here. Uh, but it does give you 5% ma magic damage and physical damage. But yeah, it's not super great out here. And that's the same thing if you saw the magic damage part. The green ones means that they're okay notes out here, but you really don't want to go for them because you can see there's many notes in going in there. So it's not really necessary. You can see the other ones, just the red ones are sort of like more clumped together, which means that they're just really, really great. And my, my idea with this was that you go through the magic damage part and then, or critical damage part, and then the, oh, well, you can go for the physical damage part first. And then of course the magic, the, the critical damage part, and then you can go either this way or this way down here. So these sort of the, things I would definitely go for a physical damage character, go through the physical damage, critical damage, uh, and then out here with the light, there's a little bit of light, good light notes out here. Um, again, also kind of a nice note here, you don't have to go very far, but it gives a little bit of critical damage, but other than that, you don't have, you don't want to go further through this. There's some nice flask notes, but yeah, flask is not like a permanent, I just feel like the permanent buffs are just a little bit better. Uh, because it's gonna give you all the time. So if you don't have any flash charges, you know it's not gonna give you the same. So I, I'd rather go for some 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 you know hard facts or hard stats if you can say it like that. So yeah, this is the physical damage part. Again, you can parse the video if you want to see which ones you want to go for. Uh, again, it's just my opinion on which ones you should you know be at least be aware of that's it for the video click the video on screen that's coming up right now youtube thinks you might like it also check out the description for all my ultimate guides that goes into more specific things in trove and also hit that like button would help me out very very much also consider subscribing and that's it thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye